Hello and welcome back to this tutorial series in which we'll be building, in which we are building Pong for Unreal Engine 4. Uh, now uh, that we've gotten our boundary set up, we've got our paddle moving, we've got collision and interaction with the ball, um, we've got some of the physics set up. Let's go ahead and move on to an important step, which is creating the artificial intelligence, or just the basic uh, <laughs> enemy uh, intelligence that will be controlling the paddle on the other side in this uh, one-player version of Pong. So the way it works, in essence is when we're playing this game here we got our paddle and we know that when the ball is coming to our side it should basically you know we should get the paddle as close to that area as quick as possible to hit it that's what we want the other side to do so it's going to basically track to wherever the ball is in the x-axis in this direction but it's also going to have a little bit of a delay on it it's still going to we're going to use um, force and physics to push it towards the direction of the ball that way when it hits it um, at speed it'll kind of fling the ball a little bit and add some momentum to it like a real character might or a real player might so let's go and jump into that first thing we need to do is go to our uh, static meshes go to our paddle right click on that paddle and type in or, and then go to asset actions create blueprint using this and we'll make this BP enemy paddle okay created our new paddle. We've got our static mesh in here, which has its collision on it, because it's the same static mesh that we used for the player. Let's go ahead and click on the uh, static mesh. We'll change all the settings to be similar to the other one. So simulate physics, enable gravity off, linear dampening, 10, and that looks good to me. Physics actor, that's all fine. Excellent. Okay, so move on from here. Go ahead and compile and save event graph. So how do we how do we find out where the ball is in the x-axis? Because we we know that it's there, but how are we going to get at it? We're going to iterate through all the different uh, actors that are in the scene that are of the type BP ball. So basically, we're going to look for any objects in the scene that are going to be the ball, and then based on what where it will be, there'll always be one. We'll use its we'll get its uh, actual position, and we'll use that as reference. So any time that or you know, any time in the update function it'll be checking for this and then updating the paddle accordingly. So go ahead and drag off the event tick which will activate it and type in get all actors of class. What this does basically is it gets any of the actors as the objects in the scene that are of a certain type or of a class. In our case we're going to be looking for ones that have the same name as our ball which is BP ball right here. We're going to search the scene and say alright where's the uh, blueprinted uh, ball object in the scene. Go ahead and select class and you'll probably find it in here but easier way to do is just type in BP underscore one of the first ones that probably comes up is ball. And now as this checking says where are all the BP balls in the scene? And it won't just return a single one, it'll return all of them in an array and although there's only one it's going to use an array. So basically the way an array is it's just like a it's a collection of different objects so if there was 20 balls in the scene it would return uh, a reference to all 20 of them out of this array here. But we only want one. So its functionality for controlling one or many is very similar. In our case though, it, we don't have to worry too much about it. All we got to do is we've got to create a for loop off of this that executes through all the BP balls in our scene, which in this case is just one. We don't have to check if it's a certain one or a certain other one. How do we do that? Pretty simple. Drag off of here and create a for each loop. Right? See it has an array plugin. Plug that in there. And this will do something for each one of whatever it has found in here. So there's only one. It'll do this just for the one uh, <laughs> actor that there is. So in this for each loop, we're going to go and pull off the body loop. And we're going to make sure we're going to cast it to BP ball. What this is doing is it's just ensuring that the information that we're pulling off of here is going to be connected to that object. It's going to be a BP ball blueprint. This is checking if it is one. This is making sure that all the information that's coming after here actually is connected to that uh, type of class, the actual object. Go ahead and plug the array element into here. And now we can just uh, get the information straight off of the uh, BP ball object. So we'll, have, we'll have a check to, to, to get it to the right position no matter where it is. Well, the if statements will actually just check for the same kind of thing that we had inside of our paddle. Uh, let me see if I can open that up for you the standard paddle uh, right here this kind of this is the if statement I'm sorry I got that mixed up before this is the if statement we're gonna basically have 
So essentially, if you want, um, it shouldn't be too bad. We can just grab this whole thing right here, right? Grab this whole thing from the our, our normal paddle. Hit Control C. Go to the enemy paddle. Paste that right in. So we'll need to change some things, but uh, the essence of it should be there. I think the only thing we'll need to change is uh, one key factor. So go ahead and just plug it in. And this is going to be, if it's a BP ball, plug it in, and boom. Make sure that it's not above. Uh, if, if you followed my other vid videos, you know exactly what this does. But if you haven't, um, this is just a check and says, you know, is the, is the paddle above uh, 1,500 units, which is off screen. Uh, if it is, then just set it back below that point so it can't go off screen. And if it isn't, then check if it's below the minimum point on the screen, negative 1,500. And if it is below that point, just set it up a little bit. Only thing we need to change here is that the way this paddle works, it's going to be applying um, impulse force instead of add force. That just works a little better for controlling it. Uh, add force is a little a uh, little sloppier in this case, uh, the way we've set it up. Uh, so we'll be using impulse, which is kind of like add force, except it happens uh, a little differently. I think the specific difference is it's uh, they say it's good for a one-time pulse, but in this case it works well for continual force. The add force uh, node is a little different. So in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, this is the add force node, right, um, in this guy. And there's also another one like this. Kind of the similar thing. You can see what it says. As an impulse to a single rigid body, good for one-time burst. It's forced like a rigid body. It acts like a thruster. Impulse works better in this example. Um, I tweaked this a lot, and I found that this just worked out best. It's kind of a, maybe a little bit of a hack, but I think it works. Anyway, back to the enemy paddle. Inside here, we've got our functionality. One thing we need to change is on the end of the... Let's get these to set the physics linear velocity to zero. Okay, there we go. And so that should just zero it out uh, whenever it hits the boundary on either side. That way the paddle doesn't get stuck, because it sometimes does with uh, the system that we're using here. So that just makes it work. Uh, good to go. All right, so now you should... This should probably make sense that none of this is actually moving the paddle. This is just checking if it's out of bounds to the top, out of bounds to the bottom, and fixing it. What we want is we want to make it actually move. Based on how we designed the, the movement for our other paddle, it's pretty straightforward. There's a little bit more going on in here. So since there's not a computer or there's not a human controlling it, we need to figure out how to how to make it control itself. So let's go ahead and do this uh, pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to check, drag off of here, and we'll do get actor location. That's seeing where the ball is. Where is the ball? Right? Then we want to find out where is this paddle? So we'll just do a get actor location. Since we dragged off of here, this is getting the ball's location. This is getting the location of where this blueprint is attached, which is the enemy paddle. And we want to compare the difference between these two, but not in all axes, just in the x-axis. We want to see what's the difference between where the ball is and where the paddle is in the x-axis. Easy way to do that, pull off of both these and hit break vector. And we're just going to do a comparison here. So we'll take this and we'll pull off from the X here. And we'll do a minus and a minus. So what this will do is whatever the value is of these, let's say this is 3 and this is 2, right? 3 minus 2 is 1. So the difference between these two is a value of 1. If it was uh, negative or positive, this will always give you the difference. You know, that's just how basic... Uh, basic math like this works is it's trying to find the difference when you take this minus this it's getting the difference we can use that difference value to actually plug into uh, make a new vector that will apply a certain amount of force depending on how big the difference is so how do we do that first thing here we'll make a new vector make vector and then we'll go over here and we'll set an add impulse so that's the thing I was talking about earlier this impulse seems to work better, in this case, than the add force. Uh, but that's just uh, my take on it. Go ahead and plug that right into here. So what you should be getting is, it says, where's the, where's the ball? Where's the paddle? Get the difference in their x-axis. And use that difference, however far away they are from each other, and use that difference as the force that will be applied in the x-axis. So if it's 10 units away, it'll apply a force of 10 to get to it faster. That's pretty good, so let's have a look at it. And there may be a few issues, we'll see what happens. We need to actually uh, put one of the, the paddles in the scene, that would probably be, uh, probably be a little bit helpful. So 
So I'll grab him, zero him out. Negative 1950. Let's see. He goes, oh, he's moving a little bit, right? Doing something. I don't know if you can see that in low resolution, but he's he's moving. But very slowly, right? So we just got to make sure that we're uh, applying a uh, multiplier to the actual value here before it goes in. Because since, once again, it's probably only a few units off, we need a much larger value to add an impulse. How do we do that? Not too bad. Put, take this, drag this guy over. Pull off of here. And we'll just multiply it. Vector times float. And we'll make a value, a new variable. You can click right here and we'll call this uh, AI paddle speed. Hit enter. Up here you can change it to a float. We'll make that public just in case we need it. Plug that right into the impulse. And then inside of here, or I'm sorry, we can just grab that value, click and drag, place it right there. So what should this value be? Probably something pretty large, maybe like 10,000. And that'll make it move a little quicker, but it may be a little strange. We'll see. Pretty close. But what happens there? You see that? We haven't enabled any collision for it, so that's that's not an issue. But see, after it comes back, it kind of goes fling, like a little like rubber band, something like a cartoon. That's not what we want. So how do we get around that? The issue with that is, is what happens is when the ball gets really far away and then moves back, it tries to correct for it. And because it's kind of a, uh, a, a slow kind of system, or not a slow system, but it's using forces and not just explicit, you know, positions or interpolation, it wants to kind of slowly, you know, work its way back to center. You know, it's going to go here and then here and then here and then here and here, and then it'll slowly get back to that point like a rubber band or something. The way we fix that is that we just limit how much it can move. So if we don't want it to move too, too fast anyway, it kind of makes the game impossible. How do we do that? We're just going to clamp the value that's coming out of here. We're going to limit it. Pull off of this and type in clamp. And then we're going to plug that into the X. And in the minimum, make it negative 10. And in the maximum, make it just, oop, a little bit of an error there. Make it positive 10. What this will do is it'll make it so it doesn't do that nearly as much. See as it comes back, it's a lot more reasonable. When it flings off, this kind of comes back. There's a little bit of jitterance there, but it's still pretty good. That's pretty comfortable, I'd say, at this point. But at this point, if you notice, we've got our paddle working. You go, oh man, that's cool. But he can't hit back, so we just win every time. Only life is so simple, right? No. What we got to do is we got to go in and we got to give him some collision. Go back to your BP ball. And this should not be too bad at all. Uh, let's go in, uh, and we're just gonna make a few changes. In fact, it's not too bad at all. We need this for the hitting the ball or uh, hitting the uh, paddle. Drag these guys down. We want to take this whole thing, copy that over, drag that down, pull off of the cast failed, plug it into here. Pull off this cast failed, plug it into here. And on this guy, we're going to drag off the other actor and plug that into the object. What is this going to do? This is not going to do anything because I messed that up. Sorry. We want to cast to uh, to BP enemy paddle. So as you can probably already guess, this is going to make it so that um, the enemy paddle is going to have collision as well. And it's going to do the exact same thing as this. Since this is just multiplying by negative value, it'll work whether it's going left or right. So we don't have to change anything else. It's as simple as that. Plug this guy into here. Plug the target in. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see if I did something wrong here. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. This needs to be the, uh, yeah. So you see what I'm doing here? I copied this over and it was checking for if it was the paddle pawn right and if it was the velocity of the paddle pawn right. In this case, we wanted to be the cast to the enemy paddle and we wanted to make sure that it is the uh, physics velocity of the enemy paddle. So we'll do get physics enemy paddle plug them into here plug this guy in up to here drag off that cast failed and let's see take it for a spin how it does oops <laughs> I may have uh, disconnected something yes in fact I have probably took it for a spin 
Oh yeah, look at that. It's like we're actually playing Pawn. And the reason is because we actually are playing Pawn. Oh no! Oh, there you go. Now it's working. We have basically the essence of a Pawn game completely working. Uh, the game works well. Uh, collision functions completely the exact way it should. Everything's running swell. At this point, it's just going to be a few more steps. Uh, we're going to clean up some things. We're going to add uh, a menu. We're going to add some additional functionality. We're going to make sure the paddle moves just the right speed. We're going to add some scoring and uh, a few other things just to make this perfect. Then we're going to build the project and we're going to make it stand alone. But at this point, you've got basically the essence of Pong working. So congratulations and nice work. Um, if you like this video and the series, please leave me a like and subscribe, comment as well, and I also have fan funding on YouTube if you're interested in helping to uh, support this channel and the video games that I make. Thanks a lot, and see you in the next one. Nice work.